Hi guys and welcome back to Radio Oddity's YouTube channel, we're at Radio Oddity's headquarters and today we are going to be doing an unboxing of some sorts. I have managed to stumble across a Yesu FT450D which I have already had out of the box and tested just to make sure that it works. Uh, but I'd like to say thanks to the guys at Lamco Barnsley for supplying me with this radio. Um, I also got 15 meters of coax and a couple of plugs but the main thing is this radio which I believe retails at around £650 and it is a high frequency stroke 50 megahertz amateur transceiver. As you can see on the box it has an antenna tuner built in and it looks to be a really fantastic radio. I've already given it a go out on the bands. So let's get started with getting it unboxed and let's take a look inside. So as you can see, it does what it says on the tin. It's a Yesu FT450D built-in antenna trans uh, built-in antenna tuner. Um, <clears throat> inside the box, you have your warranty card which you can register on yesu.com. There is a serial number on the side of the box that you have to enter along with your email address and that just sets you up with Yesu's uh, warranty. Now the warranty doesn't protect against SWR damage. The transceiver runs at 100 watts as standard. So if you are setting up an antenna for the first time, I would strongly recommend putting a dummy load onto your radio and testing your SWR that way. Otherwise you are gonna do some damage and it basically it's not covered under the warranty so that's your 650 pound down the drain so anyway enough of that you get a nice operator's manual plenty of information in here how many pages is there there's nearly 100 pages of information uh, diagrams it tells you what each individual knob and dial and button does uh, there's stuff on here with about packet operation and digital modes and all sorts really so yeah and all the specs as well so a nice easy to read big A4 manual that comes in the box so let's take a look inside see what we've got so we have a microphone which if you buy Yesu you'll see that it's like the Ethernet um, plug that goes into the radio. This is just a standard handheld microphone. It does feel quite weighty and quite sturdy. It has a down button function to move your frequency down. You can toggle the fast scan with the middle button and then the right hand side is to move your frequency up. So everything is at your fingertips for moving up and down the bands there. And like I say, a really good weighty microphone feels very well put together. I do have another Yesu microphone, which is on my 2800M, which I do prefer because it has the numbers on, on the handheld microphone. So you can key in which frequency you want to operate on. It's a lot quicker, it's a lot easier. I don't know if this microphone works with the 450D. I haven't managed to test it out yet but I will at some point and I will let you know if it works but that's a lot easier to uh, operate once you're on and you you know everything really is at your fingertips with that one so I will give it a try see if it works at some point if not it's fine we already have a microphone with it so on to the transceiver itself now it comes in a polystyrene sort of shell which protects obviously against damage. <clears throat> uh, it is all very well packed in there, so you don't need to worry. We'll just take these off and we put these back down. So, there are two legs underneath the transceiver as well that you flick up. Just to uh, elevate a little bit for when you're operating and initially on the face of it it looks like a really neat and tidy radio looks very professional nice sleek black design 
you know, everything's pretty easy to read. Uh, you're not overwhelmed with buttons and dials and knobs initially. I have seen more complicated transceivers than this. I think, yes, yeah, so we're aiming this at entry level operators. Nothing's too complicated about it. If you are new to amateur radio, I would highly recommend this transceiver. It'd be perfect for you. You can't really go wrong. It has all the bands that you'd need with it and pretty simple to operate as well. So, you get a power cable which is already hooked into my PSU, which we will put in the back there. I'll show you the back of the radio. So you have, this is where the power cable goes. You have your PL259 uh, socket that goes in there for your uh, antenna. And there is a cat port a linear amplifier port, an external tuner port, and your data port as well. And there's also a jack for a speaker on the back and an operating fan there. And there's also two jacks on the front for uh, headphones and for a CW key. So let's get the radio turned on. As I say, it does operate at 100 watts as standard. You can buy uh, linear amplifiers to add on to it um, that's not what I'll be doing with it I'm going to run it at 100 watts because that's ample enough for what I need and we will just plug in the microphone here I am going to take you outside as well because I have done some changes to my antenna setup that I do want to show you um, right coax here we go so yeah, I will take you outside and show you what I have managed to do. So I run this off a wire that runs the length of my garden. It's a wire dipole. It's a Fred Weston HF10. Really fantastic antenna. It does say it's for all bands. Now this radio will not tune that antenna on 160 and 180 meters. It tunes every other band than those two, which I think is fairly expectant. Uh, people that do use the Fred Westerns do say that the struggle, it's not, it's, it, it's not good to use on 160 and 80 meters. So, I'll turn that down a minute. You've got your power on switch there, which you know, you're just holding to turn it on. And once the radio's on, you've got lots of information there and it looks really professional. It looks really, really good. Um, it is a black and white display, which I do think goes with the radio anyway. I'm not too bothered about colour on this radio. Um, the, the look really sets it off. Um, the, the, the really I've kept it simple, have you, so with this one. And it's, it, it does look really good. So let's take a closer look at what is actually on screen. So... Right here we have our SWR meter, we've got our signal meter here. As you can see at the minute we are on the 20 meter band. And the dial here obviously turns your frequency up and down. And that's currently on the fast scan function. So that moves it up in 10 kilohertz steps as you can see. If you want to slow it down a little there's a button here that says fast and as you can see Fast has come off of here and it'll move it up a little bit slower in one kilohertz steps. And as you can see, it's now it's back on fast, back up to 10. So, what else is on this radio? We have your shift here, which is good when you're on USB and you're just shifting the signal uh, lower or higher for clarity um, we are on USB at the moment you've got your mode buttons here now these are going to switch between you've got USB LSB LSB data FM AM USB CW and back to USB so you have loads of different operating modes on this radio it is literally everything that you're going to want um, I am only going to go through basics with this radio because there's so many different functions to it. A lot of things that, you know, entry-level amateur operators aren't going aren't to be necessarily too bothered about. 
which is why I'm doing this video, just to, to get people who, who want a simple bass transceiver just to get on air. So again here, you've got your squelch and your RF gain. And as you can see on the signal meter there, adjusting that as just your squelch and takes out the background noise. And then on the end here, you've got your volume button. The internal speaker on this is a really good internal speaker. It does go quite high. I'm not going to put it up all the way because it is really high. So you want, if you don't want external speakers, you, honestly, you don't need them. The speaker is, is way good enough inside this transceiver for what you're going to want. So let's move up and down. So these are your band buttons here. So like I say, you have 160, you have 80, 40, 20, 10 and 6 meters, I believe, that are on this transceiver for you to operate on. Um, the receiving range, I think, is from 1.4 megahertz all the way up to 50. And you can get these radios wide-banded to transmit on more bands if you wish uh, because it doesn't transmit on CB and 27 megahertz as standard so you can get them wide banded I didn't opt to get this one wide banded um, so you band this moves your bands up and down as you can see uh, we are up on 10 meters here and 6 meters 50 megahertz 160 meters 80 meters. I'll just turn it up, see if there's any action going off. Um, 40 meters. I were working 40 meters last night. Um, but the, the Fred Western. The Fred Western doesn't really tune the 40 meter band very well. I have an SWR around two and a half to three, so I was very wary of operating on that on them kind of levels. Um, I was trying to just get back to a couple of CQ calls. I want I want really calling CQ myself or chatting away. I just wanted to see if uh, see what conditions were like. But like I say, I use this mainly for 20 meter operation, which is what we're on now. And the antenna that I have works really well on 20 meters. And this radio really does come into its own. Um, so yeah, so that, there you are uh, very different options with the bands. As you can see, there's Morse code operators on at the moment. This is your noise blanker. Um, I don't really suffer with too much um, interference so I have it on but if I'm honest I don't really need it on and this is another pretty decent function on this radio so as you can see on the box it does say that there's an antenna tuner built in and this is your little button here that you're going to want to tune your antenna so basically all you do is get the tune button hold it in And there we go, you're ready to go. That's tuned now to the 20 meter band and you do that on any band, obviously, if it will tune your antenna. Like I say, my, my this, this rig struggles to tune the Fred Western on uh, 160 and 80. Um, but yeah, what a fantastic radio. Well worth what the retail at for 650 pounds. They look professional, they look really simple. I would highly recommend this to any new and experienced dam operators really you can use digital modes on it you, you can pretty much do anything you want on it like i say it is a, a, a an all high frequency all the high frequency bands come as standard on this radio so i hope you like the video if you do have any more questions about this uh transceiver do feel free to comment below I will answer as many as I can. If you think that there's anything that <clears throat> I've left out of the video that you may want to know. 
then uh, by all means, comment. Um, I am just going to take you outside and show you the antenna set up, as I know a lot of people are quite interested in what we use here at Radio Oddities. We did make some changes yesterday, while the weather was better than what it is today. So, as we go out here, you can see that's a tower that I built not too long back. Um, it's around 20 foot from ground level, as you can see, that is a slightly raised platform up there on the patio but it is around 20 foot from ground level and that running along the top there is the Fred Weston wire dipole that runs horizontally across the top of Radio Oddities HQ. I did want to get it a little bit higher than what it is but I am quite wary of my surroundings and I didn't have lad enough big enough ladders big enough to get to the apex of my house as well um, but for now it does a job it's pretty sound it gets me out there and as you can see ah right well, it looks like we've had some wind overnight but the A99 vertical is still standing and I have put the diamond X300 further up onto a pole but uh, it looks like we've had some wind overnight and it looks like I need some more work on that one but that's higher up. I am struggling with 2 meter operation at the moment I don't know why I don't know if there's a problem with the coax but as I said previous I did buy 15 meters of coax and a couple of plugs so I may change that and do a video on some 2 meter operation but I am struggling with it at the moment, I don't know if it's just time at year where we are and people not really interested in 2 meter operation but yeah as you can see that's the Fred Weston HF dipole that was kindly gifted to me by another ham radio operator, very kind of him and it's now all set up and running so thank you for watching this video I do appreciate everybody's input on the channel, your likes, your comments, and most of all your subscriptions. It really does mean a lot to me, particularly with me losing my job and looking for other ways of support. It really does mean the world. So thank you for watching, and I will say 7-3 at that. Happy DXing. Get yourself a Yesu FT450D. You really can't go wrong for the price and for what they offer.